Hi, welcome to the Vet Tech Online CE. We're continuing on with Module 6.1 and we're going to talk about uh, diseases of the nervous system. So we're going to start with brain disorders. So trauma. Uh, for example, if the patient was hit by a car, um, they, their head got hit in a door, or they fell, damage results from the initial direct injured, injury and or secondary events. Uh, for example, cerebral edema, hemorrhage, hypoxia, seizures, increased intracranial pressure, and uh, can intensify and worsen brain injuries. So clinical signs, obviously the history of the trauma itself, seizures, blood in ears, nose, or mouth, ocular hemorrhage, loss of consciousness or decreased responsiveness, and signs of shock. How do we diagnose this? Just basically through history and physical exam. We can do blood work and radiographs just to get uh, to see if there was any further damage. How do we treat it? We give them oxygen to help them with their hypoxia uh, and circulatory system. Elevate the head. Give medication to help decrease the intracranial pressure. For example, a diuretic called Manitol will do just that. And um, we have to let the clients know that some brain damage is, irrever is reversible, but some is not. And if the animal does survive, he may never be back to his normal self again. Idiopathic vestibular disease. As cute as this picture may look, it's actually not. It's vestibular disease that's causing that head tilt. Um, it's acute, comes out of nowhere, and it can affect both cats and dogs. Clinical signs are incapacitating loss of balance, usually with a head tilt, and um, resting nystagmus. And uh, so you're gonna see their eyes jiggling back and forth when they're just trying to look straight. Disorientation, and um, they're gonna be ataxic and vomiting and or anorexia. How do we diagnose it? Um, typically just by the clinical signs. We may wanna do also an otic exam just to rule out inner ear problems because sometimes it can be an inner ear infection that may cause this, um, these symptoms. And we would wanna do blood work just to rule out any other diseases. How do we treat? Unfortunately, there is no treatment. You have to let it run its course. So unfortunately, it can also last about three to six weeks, which is, seems like a long time, especially when your animal seems like he's just in misery. Um, supportive care would include force feeding if necessary and confined to prevent injuries. Idiopathic epilepsy. So repeated episodes of idiopathic seizures usually starts when the dog is about a year to three years of age. It's extremely rare in cats. Seizures usually have an underlying cause. Seizures will last one to two minutes. Once they're out of the seizure, seizure they're also going to be disoriented. Um, and it may happen in a cluster or maybe in regular intervals. Sometimes excitement or stress can induce these, induce these seizures. Clinical signs, they're gonna be seizuring and uh, otherwise they're gonna be young and normal. Diagnosis, just clinical signs, blood work just to rule out any other diseases and radiographs to look for head trauma. How do we treat it? We have to treat the primary disease if there is one. Uh, you do not treat these seizures. If they get them just one under one a month, then you just do benign neglect. You don't do anything. So you have to make sure that the owner keeps track of these seizures. If they happen more frequent than one a month, then you have to give anti-seizure medication. Any seizure lasting longer than five minutes is considered a serious emergency and the vet should be contacted immediately. Um, poor, uh, the prognosis um, is poor without aggressive treatment. Brain tumors. So an enlarging tumor within the brain produces tissue compression um, and or replaces healthy neuronal tissue. So most brain tumors are metastatic by the time the animal is showing signs, unfortunately. Um, clinical signs, it depends on the location of the tumor, so where it's located in the brain uh, will depend on what it does to the patient. So um, seizures for ex uh, could be a clinical sign increasing in frequency and severity, endocrine derangement, uh, vestibular signs, and or tremor and ataxia. How do we diagnose this? Um, systematic screening for primary tumor and other organs, so we can do blood work and radiographs. Uh, cerebrospinal fluid tap, so um, we would in, in, it's there's an increased pressure, increased albumin, and usually normal white blood cell count, and an ophthalmic examination 
which indicates optic nerve edema. And you may want to do a CT or an MRI where, wherever it's available, usually at specialty clinics. How do we treat? We could surgically remove, um, but we usually just treat the clinical signs. Moving down to the spinal cord, let's talk about intervertebral disc disease, so IVDD. Most common spinal disease seen in animals. It's most common in dogs, but not that common in cats. The disc herniates from between the vertebrae and it actually compresses the spinal cord. Clinical signs is they're gonna uh, be in pain and they may have some motor or sensory deficits. Uh, it's typically a, an acute onset. Type two is just chronic and progressive and you may have some weakness or even paralysis because of the pinching of the spinal cord. Um, Usually we diagnose it just by the clinical signs in a neuro exam. And uh, how do we treat? We confine, we give steroids as an anti-inflammatory and nursing care. Surgery in more severe cases. So usually the type one that just came out of nowhere. And um, we have to let owners know that uh, dachshunds are prone to this. So we need to educate the owner early in life about this problem. We have to prevent obesity in these guys too, because that can cause the slip disc. Avoid positions that strain the animal's back. And uh, prognosis depends on what type, whether it's acute or chronic, and the severity and duration of the clinical signs. wobblers okay which is also called cervical spondylomyelopathy um, cervical spinal cord compression as a result of c5 c7 malformation so the fifth uh, to seventh cervical vertebrae are malformed or misarticulated um, compressing on the spinal cord so it occurs in large breed dogs predominantly great danes and dobermans the onset of clinical signs usually before one year of age in the great dane and after two years of age in the doberman Signs are progressive and involve hind limb ataxia. And also their proprioception is going to be abnormal. So, um, you know, when you take the toes and you curl them under, they should just flip the foot back to normal. Um, that's going to be delayed or completely absent. So the proprioception is going to be abnormal. Clinical signs of Wobbler syndrome is progressive pelvic limb ataxia, abnormal wearing of the dorsal surface of the rear paw, um, swinging wobbly gait, similar signs in the front limb, and rigid flexion of the neck, but with no neck pain. How do we diagnose this? We do blood work just to rule out hypothyroidism or any other kind of metabolic uh, defects. We could do an x-ray, which may help us determine wobblers. And uh, myelography is essential to locate the region of compression. So uh, CT, MRI as well, only at uh, specialty clinics. So without treatment, the progression is very poor. Uh, medically, we can give them some anti-inflammatories, uh, neck brace, cage confinement. Surgically, um, there is a very high risk of complication. Again, we're working with the cervical vertebrae, right? So uh, decompression of the spinal cord and stabilization of the vertebral column. So ultimately, with Wagler syndrome, it would be surgical correction would, could or could help it. Uh, it's a dangerous surgery, so some may opt not to do it, but that is ultimately the best correction method. Okay, uh, let's move on to the peripheral nervous system. Deafness, it can be due to um, central nervous system auditory pathway damage, or maybe peripheral nervous system or um, ear cochlear damage. Uh, or abnormalities. It can also be due to chronic otitis, tympanic membrane rupture, or damage to the middle ear. Um, it can be hereditary, so these guys probably shouldn't be used for breeding. Clinical signs is they're gonna be, there's gonna be a lack of response to loud noises, and they may be sleeping excessively. How do we diagnose this? Um, and innate, they don't wake up from loud noises. Um, you can clap your hands behind the animal's head, and they should kind of twitch their ears or look at you, and if they don't, uh, assumingly they just don't hear you, and you would examine the ear. There is no cure for this deafness, it, and it is hereditary, so you shouldn't breed them. Uh, but don't be don't be too disappointed with these deaf animals. They can live long, healthy lives, and they can actually learn sign language. 
So um, that's a really cool video there of a dog that knows sign language. Laryngeal paralysis. So on inspiration, air moves from the mouth or nose through the larynx into the trachea. Okay. So normally the laryngeal cartilages are pulled open during breathing and close after, right? Um, so it affects dogs and cats. It can be hereditary, acquired, or idiopathic. Um, can be acquired by several mechanisms, whether it was lead poisoning, rabies, trauma, or inflammatory infiltrates of the vagus nerve. So you can see in these pictures here how um, the larynx itself before surgery and after surgery because surgical correction is an option. Clinical signs um, for hereditary cases at about four to six months of age um, is when you're going to start seeing the issues. Inspiratory strider, dyspnea, or respiratory distress is going to happen because of this. Loss of endurance. There's going to be a voice change. You're going to actually, when they do this cough, they'll do like this goose honk. Um, cyanosis because they're not breathing properly and complete respiratory collapse also is a, is a possibility. We would do a laryngoscopy just to visualize that larynx and how do we treat it? We do surgery where we t actually tie back the larynx. Prognosis is guarded to good with surgery and you don't want to breed these animals. Okay, facial nerve paralysis. Um, the paralysis of the facial nerves often is idiopathic and comes out of absolutely nowhere. Very guarded prognosis for recovery for these guys. What they're going to look like is they're going to have a droopy ear, um, their lips are going to be paralyzed, they're going to have a deviated nose because it's kind of drooping down a bit on one side. Leftover food in the mouth and uh, absent menace and palpebral reflexes. How do we diagnose this just with clinical signs? Treatment, uh, maybe steroids, but we're not really sure if that's effective. Artificial tears to affected eye because the tear production is going to be decreased or lacking. This is what facial paralysis looks like in dogs and cats. Uh, very obvious and uh, very pitiful <laughs> and sad.